filming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, part two of Tacos and Tunes on the road. We're about to leave. We're headed to New Orleans. Every time we hang out, me and Shannon dress the same, like we're little Twinkies. This time, though, I think John and Kate, I think they've been getting <laughs> jealous. Yeah, give me your best, your best little Asian uh, key <laughs> signs. <laughs> Man, look at this. Rice and beans. <laughs> Babe, what are you most excited about? Beignets. 100% <laughs> beignets. That was so fast. I've been thinking about this for a long time. <laughs> We've been in the car together for a long time. Five ish hours. Yeah. Are we still friends? Mm. Hey! We just got to the house in New Orleans. It's awesome, it's beautiful. We've been in the car for eight and a half hours, so I will show you everything tomorrow. Oh, hey. <laughs> I'm not David, although I'm dressed like him. It's day two in New Orleans. Kind of day one. Kind of day one. Kind of day two. Kind of day two. So you weren't wrong. Let's go, we're still friends. Woo! We rode so far together. Jonathan, I, I beat him in the face, look at that eye. <laughs> I'm gonna be super real with you guys. I cannot promise that uh, I'm gonna find a lot of tacos here. I can't promise that if I do find tacos, I'm gonna choose them over the stuff that New Orleans is known for. I'm ready to try some gumbo, some jambalaya, uh, some boudin, all the delicious things that I might even normally be afraid of. I'm ready to try all of it. Also, uh, it's hot. So one of our favorite records, I should I say ours, it's like it is one of my favorite records, but it's like really one of John's favorite records by Mute Math called Armistice was made in this house. And so we're uh, outside of someone's house. <laughs> It just to be close to where this happened. How are you feeling, John? I, my heart is very full right now. <laughs> this is about as much as I'm gonna show you guys because someone lives here. Let us have our moment. Can you feel the creative vibes in the air right now? Yeah. Can you? Yeah. Funny enough, uh, I've invited someone else who was here for the making <laughs> that record. Paul, come, come on out. <laughs> to stump down coffee roasters right now. I know that's not a NOLA spot, but we don't have one in Dallas, and I will, they're delicious, and we're gonna go drink coffee, and then we're gonna do other things. Oh, hey, we, we're here to see a concert. We're seeing David and Rice We're seeing David and Rice tonight. tonight. Now the trip is over. <laughs> I keep forgetting that we're going to that's see David and Rice tonight. Came. I'm also not filming that, so. Oh, man. Oh, Dave. Poor little sweet, silly, dum dum, naive. Dave, I had to interrupt because I was, I'm going back through the vlog and I'm editing this and I see how genuinely excited we are about this concert. When we remember, hey, we didn't just come to New Orleans, we came here for a concert. We're here to see Damien Rice, who, by the way, hasn't come through Texas in like 10 years. And so when I tried to get tickets to his show in Austin and they sold out in like five minutes and then I saw that there were tickets in New Orleans, I thought, hey, Two birds, one stone. We've never been to New Orleans, and we get to see Damien Rice with some friends. Let's do it. If there had been a way to know that we were about to walk into the most frustrating concert we have ever been to in our lives. And the worst part is it wasn't even Damien's fault. To be honest, if we'd gone to see him and he just wasn't that great, I would have been bummed out. But hey, that happens sometimes. No, what happened was 
everyone else sucked. Yeah, that's right. December 2nd, were you in New Orleans at the Damien Rice concert? Then there is like a 60-40 chance that you, my friend, sucked a little bit. So this was going to be a vlog about traveling and how that impacts the creative process and for creatives and songwriters, artists of any kind, can you hear the influence of different places and music? And we had a great long conversation with John and Shannon about that, but all four of us unanimously agreed we were gonna make a vlog about how to avoid ruining a concert like this. You see, we've talked about this a lot before. If you've heard the founding story of Tacos and Tunes, you've heard us talk about those amazing one in a million live music experiences. We've experienced them as fans or as artists or as both, but that moment where in the middle of a song, everything goes quiet and the artist is teasing out the silence and everybody is hanging on their breath and then the song comes in and swells or ends or ebbs in just the right way, the exact way that that artist meant for it to. And in that moment, they're able to communicate exactly what they wanted to communicate. It's a one in a million experience. Tacos and Tunes was founded on the idea that maybe those one in a million experiences don't need to be one in a million. Why can't they happen every month? So when we're in a situation like this one with Damien Rice, where we drove nine and a half hours to get there. I want my wife to experience this artist live for the first time. We've been watching videos online of these incredible performances and I've been telling stories about it. And then he comes out and everyone cheers and there's a moment of silence. And right then, right before he's about to do what he does, someone screams, take your shirt off. And so one person did it and then another person did it. And then there are other people yelling, oh, let Damien play his own set. And then people start shouting out song suggestions. And at first he takes a couple of the suggestions and he plays those songs. And I'm kind of thinking, is this gonna fuel the fire or are people gonna get it out of their systems and eventually things will even out? But it doesn't, it just gets worse and worse. So bad that at one point he literally got on the mic and had to say, hey, how about this? I'll make you a deal. Every song you guys shout out, I won't play. Listen, I know it may seem that I'm overreacting about this, but I really don't think that I am. At the end of the day, people have dedicated their entire lives to this creative expression. And whether they have the good fortune of being able to play these big, beautiful stages, or like me and other artists, I know they're playing open mics and coffee shops, at the very least, they deserve our respect. And so do the audience members that are sacrificing their time and probably their money looking for a beautiful one in a million experience. You wouldn't yell at a chef at any restaurant, five star or fast food to take their shirts off for your entertainment. And you wouldn't tell your dentist which tooth you'd prefer him to work on. You let those people do their jobs. So let that person do their job. And if their job requires them saying, hey, y'all are too quiet, everyone get out of your seats, I wanna feel some energy from you, then do it. If that person's job in that moment requires them to say, hey, I wanna pour my heart out to you and I just want your attention, that's all I want. Keep that in mind. And if you don't wanna give them your attention, then don't, but, don't ruin it for the rest of us. Are we good? We're good. Okay, cool. I'll put the soapbox away until uh, I take it out again because this is my vlog. So that concludes part two of Tacos and Tunes on the road. Listen, we love doing this. We love getting out of the city every now and then and getting to show other places to you guys. So I wanna hear from y'all in the comments below. Let me know where you would like to see us take the vlog and we will see you next week.